family, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Danny. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell because I'm posting lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of new content all the time. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, please be sure to do that. It is at the underscore dancing underscore bookworm. I post on there full book reviews and bookish content. So um, today is Friday. It's about 8.45 in the morning. Um, I am watching my nieces and nephew for the day, so we are going to have a spa day. It is also the first day of May and it's absolutely gorgeous outside, so we're going to go outside. And I haven't really decided what my first read is going to be for the month of May, but I think it might be Night Lights by Lorena Al Alvarez, which is a graphic novel that I will get more into later if I decide that that's my first read. But I also know that I have some books coming in today that might end up being my first read. So we will see, but I thought I would record a little bit of our spa day because it is bound to be adorable because they are adorable. So let's go. What kind of day are we having today? Spa day. What are we going to do on spa day? Uh, no work. No schoolwork. Yep. What else are we going to do? Are we gonna, get our feet washed. We're going to get our feet washed. Are we going to paint our nails? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe like cucumbers on our eyes and a face mask. And a towel on our head. And a towel on our head. <laughs> Sounds fun. Right, right, what are you going to do? Yeah, I'm going to do that. That's good stuff. Good stuff right there. So it's about 7.30 on Friday night. Um, I had a pretty fun day with the kids today. I have my nails painted, my fingers and my toenails, and my toenails. I never, ever paint my nails, so, like, ever. <laughs> so this is a very rare experience. I think the last time I painted my nails was, was like two years ago, so that's how much I don't paint my nails. But I think I'm going to go to the store and get some fuel for the weekend, some snacks and stuff. I'm trying to eat a little healthier. I've gained a lot of weight in quarantine, so I need to reset myself and kind of cleanse my body with some healthy food. So I'm going to try to find some healthy snacks. I hate going to the store. Literally hate it. It is the worst experience. I absolutely hate our grocery store right now because, I mean, they're doing everything right for quarantine, but people are crazy. I got body checked by a lady last time I went there, and I was like, that's not social distancing. Anyway, I'm going to go to the store, cross my fingers, I can make it through. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, guys. Um, but yeah, other than that, I've just taught classes today, and I will check in with you guys. I'm going to start a book tonight. I just don't know which one, though I'm leaning towards Night Lights because I can read it probably by the end of the night, so <laughs> I'm hoping to bust out one. I was supposed to get more books today, but they never came, so I think they're coming tomorrow, but they were supposed to be here today, so I'm bummed. <laughs> Okay, so it is almost 11 o'clock at night. Um, I went to the store. I know my best friend's calling me in a very short amount of time, but I wanted to get some reading in today since it is the first day of May. So I did find Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder on audiobook on Scribd, and this is for my reading rivalry readathon and that is to read a book with an anniversary edition. So that is what I'm going to do now is listen to that, put away my laundry. But after I get off the phone with my friend, which will probably be like three o'clock in the morning, I do have to finish up all my um, wrap up stuff for Instagram because I did all my video stuff. I just haven't done like my wrap up for Instagram. So that's what I'm going to do today, tonight, tomorrow, early morning, <laughs> whatever comes first. Um, but I am going to listen to Little House in the Big Woods now. 
hopefully get some of that in before my friend calls. Um, and then tomorrow I do really want to get through Nightlights. But most of the other books that I have, I looked and there's no audiobooks for them except the Magic Misfits series, which I'm going to be listening to on audiobook because Neil Patrick Harris reads it himself. And I've already read one of the books before, so um, I wanted to listen to it on audiobook this time. But um, I can't read that till believe a starts. And I looked and Girl Interrupted doesn't even have an audiobook. So that's kind of frustrating because I thought that would be one of the ones that I could audiobook. Um, Sun does by Lois Lowry, but I have to read Messenger first because they're in a series and Messenger comes before Sun. Um, so yeah, so and then the other ones like Ballet Shoes has an audiobook, but again, it's for believe -a -thon. So I can listen to a lot of audiobooks during believe -a -thon, but the ones that have audiobooks are all for believe -a -thon and not ones that I can read yet. So I'm gonna have to hunker down and do some like real reading this weekend, which is fine. Um, at the store, I got lots of healthy snacks. I'm really proud of myself. I got some pita chips, some veggie straws, um, dark chocolate instead of other kinds of chocolate that I could have gotten. Um, I did get all diet soda and water um and then I got a lot of relaxing stuff too I did get different nail polish I will paint my nails tomorrow because I forgot I do actually like my nails painted um but I just was not digging the lime green so I did get some more neutral colors I also got some bath fizzies um not like bath bombs but they're like a mix between the salts and the bombs which are cool so I'm gonna test those out tomorrow I think but I'm just gonna have a relaxing weekend I told my boss I'm having a no phone weekend so I'm not gonna do any work stuff um I don't have therapy or anything so it's just and it's supposed to be beautiful outside so I can go out I can read um I think somebody's coming to paint our deck this weekend but I can still go outside and read even if I go outside in the front yard at least I'm outside enjoying the beautiful weather and all the laundry that I did today is all my spring and summer clothes so those are finally washed and I can officially switch all my closet over to spring and summer so excited for that but I'm gonna listen to a little bit of this audiobook till my friend calls good morning it is a Saturday. It is 5 o'clock in the morning. I have not gone to sleep yet. I'm sure you're shocked. Um, but I was up talking to my friend. I did this last week too where I was up talking to my friend till late. But honestly, her and I didn't even talk that late. I've really just been finishing up all my Instagram posts from April so that I could start all my May stuff. I got really behind in Instagram posts in April, it appears, because um, it took me three days to catch up on all of them, so I need to be better about that this month. Um, but I did not start a physical book. I do want to read Nightlights, but I'm not going to do it now because I really need to go to sleep, even though I'm not tired. I really need to go to sleep, but I'm not tired. Um, but I did start listening to the audiobook of A Little House in the Big Woods by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Um, if you guys don't know what it's about, it's basically the book series that inspired the show Little House on the Prairie. Um, but it's about three sisters who are basically like homegrown, raised, all American kids back in the olden days living on the prairie kind of thing. Um, but they, this book specifically, um, I believe is about Laura kind of wanting more than what her family can afford. It's talking a lot about how her sister has a doll and all she has to play with is a cob of corn. So, um, yeah, it's kind of interesting so far. It's talking a lot about butchering their own meat and hunting their own meat. I don't fully know what this book is about because I originally had planned to get the series and it's supposed to be here by now but it never shipped I guess so I'm still waiting for it to come in like in physical copy so I just looked up the audiobook and played it and I don't know the full description of what this first book is about but I do know it's about the three sisters living in a little house in the big woods <laughs> <laughs> with their two parents um and basically it's like they're growing up together kind of thing it's got like a little little women kind of vibe um but definitely a different time period and different setting for sure but the family dynamics are very similar to little women so little women little house on the prairie all the same all the same I guess um but yeah I am going to go to sleep I don't know. I'm not tired, but maybe maybe I'll fall asleep. I do have some YouTube that I want to catch up on watching, so maybe I'll do that, and then eventually I'll fall asleep. It's bad when I'm going to sleep and the birds are chirping to wake other people up. That's not good. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm going to do for right now. So I'll check in later.
Hello! So it is 7 o'clock on Saturday night. Um, I ended up sleeping till 5 this evening. Um, so I didn't fall asleep till like 7 a.m. Um, so then by the time I had woken up, it was 3 o'clock and I was like, oh, okay, I'll get up now. And I rolled over and must have fallen back to sleep. In fairness, on weeknights, I'm getting about two hours of sleep. So Saturdays are really my day to catch up with sleep. My hair is a wreck right now, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, but that was a little excessive, excessive sleeping. But it happens. Sometimes you just need to sleep the day away. And I guess that was my day to do that. But afterwards, I went down, hung out with the fam for a little bit and brought my niece up to my room and she destroyed my room. So I have to pick it up now. But while I pick it up, I'm going to listen to Little House in the Big Woods a little bit more um, because it's... It's gonna take a little while to clean up what she did. Um, but I also have two physical books that I want to read tonight. So the first one is Night Lights by Lorena Alvarez. This is a middle grade graphic novel. Um, it's about a girl who at night she's able to capture the stars and turn them into little creatures to help her fall asleep. And when she wakes up in the morning she draws pictures of the creatures um, so that she always remembers them. But a girl gets a hold of the pictures and ends up using this for evil. Um, and then the other one tonight that I want to read is Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. This is the real life story about a girl who is 18 in the 1960s and her family decides that she needs to be sent to a psychiatric facility. Um, there she meets a wild bunch of girls who kind of convince her that she's worse off than she might actually be but also she's being mistreated by staff and not properly diagnosed as well. Um, so this is actually a movie as well. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, it talks a lot about borderline personality disorder, which is something that's very close to my heart. It's going to be very interesting to read the book, I think, um, just because it is something so intense. Um, and this is my only non-middle grade for the month because I'm trying to do a middle grade May kind of thing in honor of the Leave-a-thon. Um, so this is my only non-middle grade, but I am excited to read this. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to read Night Lights first after I pick up. Um, and then once everyone goes to sleep, I'm going to read Girl Interrupted in the Bath. So that's my plan. Um, it sounds like the baby's going to bed now. So... Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna pick up, listen to an audiobook, and then continue on with my night, I guess. Okay, so I just finished reading Night Lights by Lorena Alvarez. Um, this was absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna show you guys a picture from it because this is just so beautifully, like, the graphics are just, look at that. That's just so beautiful. Um, I loved this. I thought this was adorable. Um, I thought I'd share, share my Caw Pile rating with you guys. If you guys don't know what Caw Pile is, um, G at Book Roast created this system for rating books. A lot of booktubers are using it right now, but I started adapting it kind of my own way, but using it because last couple years when I've rated books, they have either been like five star, three star, or one star. Rarely did I give a two or a four because I was just kind of estimating my like level. And then people would ask me like, oh, Oh, why did you like that book? And I'd be like, um, it was just really good. Like, I didn't really know the explanation for it. So this rating system has actually helped me a ton with getting that explanation. So I will link her video where she explains more about what Caw Pile is and how it works down below. But basically, you are rating based on characters, atmosphere, writing, plot, um, intrigue, logic, and enjoyment. And you rate them 1 through 10, average it out, and then you can average it out, but what I do is I average it out and then I also round it up to the next number and that's what the rating turns out to be just because I feel like, like, I I mean, I average it out so if it's like a 7.2, it would be a 7 and if it was like a 7.5, it would turn out to be an 8. Um, I know not everybody does that. Most people do the decimal system, but I just prefer to round it up because it just makes more sense to me. Um, but... I wanted to share with you guys my Caw Pile rating for Night Lights because I thought it was really good and I kind of want to start doing that more often so you guys know why I like a book or why I don't like a book. Um, but for character, I gave it seven. Um, I just thought the characters were well written. This is like a 
beginner middle grade graphic novel. So for like kids just starting off reading graphic novels, it's easily written. Um, and the characters I thought were really good. What I loved about the character of Sandy is that she was kind of an outcast, but she still had like a couple friends. And I feel like a lot of books when people are writing them, they write them like she was such an outcast, she had no friends at all. And that's true for some people, but some people just feel like an outcast, even though they have one or two friends. And that's what I really liked about Sandy. I also loved her big imagination in the book. Then for atmosphere I gave a nine. I think graphic novel atmosphere is mostly based off of the drawings and these are gorgeous. I mean even the parts where she's not in a fantasy world where she's just in her house or in her bed. I mean I thought it was so well done and I just I really could get into where she was from and it didn't need to be like oh this is the setting this is the plot kind of thing but it just kind of did that through the artistry which I enjoyed. Um, for writing, I gave it a five. I mean, most early middle grade graphic novels don't have a ton of writing in them. The writing that was in there really did help advance the plot line and I thought it was good, but they did heavily rely on drawings and short little dialogue pieces um, more than like blocks at the top that have a little bit description in it. Um, but the dialogue was usually like one one sentence um, and then would move on to something else. So the writing was kind of your basic early middle grade, so I gave it a five. Um, for plot, I gave it an eight. I thought that the plot was really cute. I think the beginning plot was better than kind of the ending, but the twist I thought was funny. So funny that I like texted my friend and I was like, you'll never guess what the twist of this was <laughs> like, but it was really fun and it showed um, more characterization of Sandy. Like everybody thought she was a slacker who didn't really care about school, but it showed that she actually paid attention in school. Even though she was drawing it off in her own little world, she was still being a good student. So I enjoyed that. Um, for intrigue, I gave it a nine. I thought most of the intrigue came from just wanting to flip through this beautiful, these beautiful pages. And actually, when I finished reading it, I ended up flipping through the pages again, just to look at the drawings again. Um, but I was very intrigued in what was going to happen as well. I thought that there was like a moment where I was like, uh oh, like this isn't gonna turn out well. Um, and I ended up really enjoying it. So um, for logic, I gave it a six. I don't think like even fantasy world what happened would have happened to get out of a fantasy world. Um, but I did enjoy that it was kind of like, oh, well, see, she was paying attention in school this whole time kind of thing. Um, because I thought that that was a good overall moral for kids. And the last one is enjoyment. And I gave it a nine for enjoyment because even though it only took me like a half an hour to read, I really, really did enjoy it. It was beautiful. And I think that it was a great kick to doing my middle grade month of May and I thought that it was just fun. It was a, just a fun read. Um, and there is going to be a second book. There is a second book already. It came out in March, um, but it's called Hecate and it's about her going on a field trip and something that happens during the field trip with these creatures that she's created. So um, I do want to get that. I think originally I had bought this book and I was like, oh, I'm then going to donate it to my best friend's classroom, but I don't think I'm going to because it was so beautiful. I don't want to give it up. It's just so pretty. Um, but I do think I would probably read it with my niece I think she would enjoy it um my oldest niece because I don't think she would understand how to read a graphic novel right now because she's only six but I think if we sat down and read it together she would really enjoy it and think it was pretty so um but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a quick snack and then I'm going to go into the bath and I'm going to read Girl Interrupted in the bath well a good chunk of it anyway um but I did get some new bath bombs that I want to try out. They're actually like bath salts, I think. They're called bath fizzies. I don't really know. Um, but they smell delicious. So I want to try those out. And I just want to relax. And this book I'm really excited for. Um, borderline personality disorder is something that's very close to me um, and has affected my life and my family personally. So um, I am really excited to read this and... Um, kind of see the differences between the book and the movie and how Hollywood kind of Hollywoodized it um, based on her real experience. So...
it's two in the morning. You know, the huge up late. Um, I did just finish reading Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. Um, this book was very, very good and very, very eye-opening. So much different than the movie. Um, Hollywood definitely took some artistic liberties and, you know, I think almost did the book a little bit of an injustice. I still really enjoy the movie, but I think the Hollywood version of a psychiatric facility is so much different than the real thing and it's just kind of upsetting to see um, a really traumatic experience turned into something that's almost kind of seemed funny and um you know that that weird intensity that the movie has um so call pile wise I did characters I gave it an eight it's hard for me to say characters for um memoir books because you know they're not created they're real people but um I think the way that the characters are written um were pretty good um I would have liked a little bit more detail and like um almost like a little bit more characterization of the main character but given that she was the one writing the book I feel like maybe she didn't want to like be like exactly this is who I am and blah 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 because it's kind of a mystery to her throughout the entire book who she is that's kind of the point so I think characters were done well I just would have liked a little bit more um atmosphere I gave it an eight I think the psychiatric facility was you know it was a real place. It was traumatizing to her and I think that that's what she kind of put into it. Um, writing I gave a six. The thing that I didn't like about the book was that it bounced around from um, like times. So like in one chapter you're reading about a girl who commits suicide and in the next chapter she's alive again and she's flashing back but it's not written in flashback. It's just like oh and this is what happened blah 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 blah. Um, it's not like, oh, and I was thinking about, or this was a flashback. It's kind of confusing that it bounces around time periods. Um, for plot, I gave a six. There was no really overwhelming plot other than was she going to get released from the psychiatric facility, which I mean, she wrote the book. So <laughs> obviously you kind of knew that was going to happen. Um, so there was no plot. It was just kind of like, you know, what happened. A normal memoir. Um, intrigue, I gave an eight. I thought it was very intriguing. I thought it was very interesting to see um, this viewpoint of somebody who was brought to a psychiatric facility in the 60s and diagnosed with something that I know very well, which is borderline personality disorder. So it was interesting to see her take on it, and I was really intrigued to keep reading. Logic, I gave a nine. I thought it was very logical. There was a lot of things in it that were facts and um, straight from medical books straight from case files of herself stuff like that so I thought that brought a lot of logic to it and for enjoyment I gave it an eight I really really enjoyed it um the one thing I didn't like is that sometimes it kind of went off in her like poetic writing style because she's also writes fiction and she also writes poetry so it did kind of like go off in like a poetic writing style instead of sticking to the main um theme of it so I didn't really super enjoy that but it also kind of added a little element to like the mental health like dark points where she kind of couldn't get her sentences right and stuff like that. Um, overall, the rating came out to be a 7.5, which I rounded up to an 8, which gave me four stars, which is also what Nightlights was. So, so far, my May has kicked off with two books, and they were both four stars. Um, I've been kind of debating what I want to do because I'm not tired at all, because obviously I don't wake up till 5 at night. So, I'm thinking that what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my book journal for Girl Interrupted and Nightlights and finish listening to Little House in the Big Woods while I do that, because I think I only have like an hour and a half left of that. Um, um, and then I'm going to go to bed because I don't want to sleep tomorrow away because it's supposed to be 75 out. So I really want to wake up and enjoy the weather. <laughs> so, um, but I do have quite a few books that I want to read tomorrow as well. So we'll see how much I can get through. But, you know, starting my month off good with two good books. So I'm excited. Good morning. Again, it is 530 in the morning and I have not gone to sleep. However, I am determined to not waste tomorrow away, so I'm going to go to bed for a few hours and then wake up at a normal human hour, probably around one or two. That is my plan. Um, but I did finish listening to A Little House in the Big Woods. Um, call pile wise, I gave characters a seven, atmosphere an eight, Writing a 7, Plot a 5, Intrigue a 7, Logic a 6, and Enjoyment a 7, which rounded out to be 4 star rating. Um, I didn't go through each of those individually because all of them were just kind of like, 
your typical five, six, sevens. <laughs> like they were, you know, they, it was a cute kids classic book. Um, there wasn't a big plot line, which is why plot was so low for me. Um, but the characters were cute. The writing was cute. It was just a cute kids classic. Um, there wasn't really much to say about it beyond that. I just enjoyed it. And, um, it was an okay, it was an okay. Um, but it did still end up with four stars because I did look at the time period that it was written in and how kids would still enjoy it today. And I think that it is still, something that kids can relate to even though nobody lives on a prairie anymore um but I do still think it's something that people can relate to and enjoy so um that was the four stars of it okay I still haven't gone to sleep but I will say one thing I am a sucker for the sunrise it is about six o'clock in the morning and it is just beautiful outside like the birds are chirping it's so peaceful it's the perfect temperature I'm just looking out my window at all the houses and the clouds and the trees and it just makes me so happy like I have been a sucker for the sunrise for the last couple years but like there's a bird flying over there right now and it's just so peaceful and I know I need to go to bed I know I need to go to sleep but Part of this makes me want to just stay up all day. I don't think I will, but it's just really peaceful and I really like it. It is 10 o'clock, I think. Yeah, 10 o'clock on the dot at night. Um, it's been an eventful day here. I ended up waking up at 1, which I thought was pretty good given to that I didn't go to bed till 7. Um, so I ended up waking up at 1. I went outside all day and I have officially become a lobster. I am so sunburnt, so bad that there's like some blisters on my arms too from the sunburn. Um, but yeah, I am really sunburnt and I didn't read much because we did like a social distancing visit with my sister-in-law's sister and her daughter um who's kind of become like another niece to me um over the years that we've gotten really close with them so uh it's like a little family get together from six feet apart but I didn't read much because we did a lot of talking um but I did get through 20 pages of the messenger um where did I set it oh yeah it's over here um this is by Lois Lowry this is the third book in the giver series and this is about Maddie who has lived with the seer for many years and the seer has kind of taken care of him and protected him but his dream is to become the messenger of the town and deliver important messages to the rest of the world but their forest is kind of being um overtaken and people are dying in the forest and he needs to go out of the forest to deliver a very important message to a different area um so he's risking his life by doing that um I only got 20 pages in I'm not super loving it I do love The Giver, but Gathering Blue didn't really do much for me. But I want to read The Messenger because Sun sounds really good. Um, and this also does have Jonas as a character. Jonas was from the first book of The Giver, and Jonas is a character in here as well, um, where Gathering Blue he was not, at least not that I caught. Um, but yeah, so I think what I'm going to do, my best friend really wants to talk and I really wanted to finish that book, but I guess I'm going to call her because she's really bored. Uh, she's going to hate me for putting in how bored she is. <laughs> Hi. Um, but I think I'm gonna call her so that we can do like Mad Libs or Scategories or something over the phone and just have fun for a little bit. Um, but I do want to read at least a couple more chapters before bed. I did take a power nap when I came inside. I took like a 20 minute power nap just because I was so tired from being in the sun all day that I took like a nice cold shower and then um, took like a 20 minute nap just like, I didn't turn on my sound machine or anything because I knew I wouldn't wake back up if I did that. So I just kind of, like, vegged here and had, like, a half awake, half asleep 20 minutes. Um, So I'm pretty rested, but I do want to go to bed fairly early tonight because I don't want to get in this habit of staying up till 5 o'clock in the morning every night. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to call her and then hopefully talk for, like, an hour and then get back to the messenger. I wanted to read more books this weekend, but it was just so nice and we had company, so it was just hard to read, but 
hopefully over the next couple days I'll be able to read more. I was kind of in a slump from quarantine on Friday, like it hit me hard. No, I guess like Thursday. Thursday it hit me really hard that like quarantine sucks and stuff like that. I mean, obviously it sucks, but like it was like nothing's gonna get better and blah blah blah. And it was just like this really big slump because they announced schools were closing for the rest of the year and it was just rough. So I ended up um, having a rough couple days because of that, but then, and then yesterday I slept all day, so that was still rough, but then today the nice weather has kind of turned that around, so I want to keep up this positive energy so I can keep going throughout the week, because, you know, weekends are important and I'm looking forward to the next weekend, so, <laughs> and just gonna keep looking forward to weekends until there's something else to look forward to, I guess. <laughs> Happy Monday! So, I just got off the phone with my best friend, um, we talked for three hours, th over three hours. Um, I did not get any more of Messenger done, so I'm going to probably finish that up tomorrow. Tomorrow I also have to go get my paycheck, um, so I'll probably work, or I'll probably babysit, work, get my paycheck, come back, and read a lot, but I don't want to stay up late tonight because I do have the kids in the morning and I don't want to be miserable, but there's also YouTube videos that I want to watch, and my room is scoldering hot right now I think because I've had the lights on so and I mean it's hot out but I think another point is that I have the lights on so I'm gonna turn off the lights watch a little YouTube before I fall asleep and put something on my sunburn guys it hurts so bad and it's just getting redder it's horrible Ugh. Um, but tomorrow's supposed to be rainy so no sun hello so it's nine o'clock on Monday morning I am in charge of this little thing right here yeah, she's looking at pictures of my dad and saying Papa. He's very cute. Um, but we are, I have the other two downstairs. Ava doesn't feel good because she got too much sun yesterday. I couldn't sleep all last night because I had too much sun yesterday. Jacob seems okay and Riley seems okay. But she decided to travel up to my room while I got dressed with me. So, hi. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> good job. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna babysit. I have to go get my check later, but basic day pretty much. So we'll see how much reading I can get done tonight. So I just got a Geek Gear Wizardry box in the mail and Ava really wants to do an unboxing. So I think I'm just gonna insert the unboxing here because it's March box, so it's a little outdated anyway. But also they're always really quick to open because I do the wearables edition. So it only comes with a few t-shirts and like one item. So instead of doing an unboxing separate for that, I'm just gonna insert it here. So today I have a Geek Gear Wizardry wearables unboxing. Ava just wanted to be a part of this. So it's not really a kid's box. It's a Harry Potter related box. Um, if you guys are interested in your own Geek Gear Wizardry wearable box, I will post the link down below, but it is basically a box that sends you Harry Potter clothes. Do I need more Harry Potter clothes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, always, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to dig in. We're going to open it up. So first thing you see on top is this. All right, what do we got there? We got some socks. Oh, I should mention that this is the March box because everything got delayed with shipping um, because of coronavirus. So this is the March box. Um, so what do we got? We got like some shamrock. I think this is one of the Quidditch teams, the um, Irish. Or gloves, or these are like the... No, they're definitely socks. But these are the um, Quidditch, the Irish Quidditch team from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Um, I do forget that Quidditch team's name because I didn't really like them. I like the Chudley Cannons better because I thought they were funny. Um, but this is the Irish team. So there's some socks. Here's some socks. All right, here's the next thing. We have a shirt. Um, I do order the men's shirt sizes because I find that they fit a little bit better. Uh, let's see, what does this one say? This, this is, oh, it's, oh, that's so cute. Look, it's a castle coming out of a book, Ava. How perfect is that for me? Wow. It's the Harry Potter castle coming out of the book. That's really cool. I think that might be one of my and new favorites. And here's some socks. Yeah, they got the socks already. They, they've learned about the socks. All right, here's my next one. We have, is this a long sleeve? It looks like a long sleeve, which, you know, don't really need long sleeves anymore right now. But this says, there is no good and evil. There is only power and those who, too weak to seek it. That is a Voldemort quote. That is nice and golden and black. Um, not really long sleeve weather conditions anymore, but it was when this box originally, originally was supposed to ship in March. And then we have another shirt. One last shirt, and this is the, oh, Ava, what's that? We were just talking about that. The fly, 
flying car. The flying car. That's from Chamber of Secrets, Secrets, which Ava just watched half of a little while ago. And her and Jacob really liked the flying car in it. So that is Arthur Weasley's flying car with Harry and Ron and Hedwig inside <gasps> the... Do you see the Hedwig? <laughs> Is he his little cage? Yeah, he's got his little cage. But yeah, so that is the Geek Gear March. So I really liked all the items in the wizard, the Geek Gear Wizardry box. I think my favorite is probably the shirt with the castle coming out of the book. I think that's really cool. Um, and a close second would be the flying car. I'm not a big fan of the um, long sleeve just because, I don't know, the quote was kind of weird to have on a shirt. But And the socks are a little outdated because obviously it was supposed to be March's box. But I'm going to go wake up the baby because it is well past how long she needs to sleep and we're gonna do some lunch okay so we just had lunch I'm going to um, play for a little bit with the kids but I am also going to try to fit a workout in so I'm gonna try to find a kids family friendly workout and see how well that goes with me and Ava <laughs> I just went to the store. Um, I didn't really have to go to the store, but I had to pick up my check and my family had to go to the store. So we all went to the store, which was fine. Um, but when I was there, I realized they had a lot of craft and art supplies and I have been wanting to make a new TBR game for a while now. I enjoy TBR Raffle, but I feel like it could be more. And the reason I started TBR Raffle is because I wanted a game, but I didn't have any space to put a game. But now I do have a space. So now I want like a game game like other people play but also I enjoy games more than I enjoy doing the raffle um, and the raffle jar is kind of falling apart and some of the raffle slips have been picked multiple times and I'm just kind of over it because I want a better system so I think I was going to read messenger tonight however I never got a nap today because I had to go get my check and I only slept like three hours last night maybe because of my sunburn hurt so bad I could not get to sleep. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on some TV for one of my book reading things. Um, my, my reading rivalry, I have to binge watch a TV show of the TV shows that they listed. So I think I might binge watch one of those shows or I might finish that so Raven. <laughs> one or the other. I have to binge watch the show at some point this month, but whatever. Um, or I might watch that so Raven, but I think I'm going to do that and make my new TBR game because I just think if I start reading I'm just gonna fall asleep and it's only eight o'clock so I don't want to fall asleep yet because then I'll wake up at like midnight and be like well now what <laughs> um so yeah I think that's what I'm gonna do and I will give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek into the TBR game in this vlog but I think for the weekend I'm going to film like a bonus three picks of my TBR so if you guys want to tune into my Sunday video and you can see what bonus three TBR picks I get because I want to test out my new board. So, yeah. So, here's my new TBR game. It's Bookerty. Um, it's based off of Jeopardy. So, basically, um, I'm going to roll a dice, and if I get a 1, I have to pick a silver card, a 2 is a blue card, a 3 is a pink card, a 4 is a orange card, a 5 is a green card, and if I pick a 6, I get to choose. If I roll a number 
the same number three times, I have to pick a dub uh, double Jeopardy card, which, so these all have like prompts underneath them, and obviously they're in their genre, so I could like pull a sci-fi card, and I'll just do this one as an example and then trade it out, but like if I got the, like if I had rolled a four, I could pick any category I wanted, but something that had to do with a four. So I would pick from the four and it is a predicted bad book that would have to be a sci-fi fantasy. Um, so I'll trade that one out so that it's not the same. But yeah, so roll a four, pick a category that I want, doesn't really matter which one, pick the card off, whatever it says is what I have to do. Okay, so I was a little crueler to myself with these punishment cards than I thought I would be. So like I have no books under 150 pages, double TBR picks, same prompts, new books, so I have to keep all the prompts that I had but pick brand new books for all of the ones that I had already selected. Um, all new picks, which means all the prompts and the books have to be different. Only pick sci-fi fantasy for the rest of the picks, so I have that for each genre that's on the board of only, that's the only genre I can pick for the rest of the um, time that I'm playing the game. Then I have... Um, read only at night which isn't that hard for me read entire book dressed as a character from the book pick three extra books add a roll finish a series read an entire book not in my bedroom and someone else picks the rest of my books based on the prompts that I choose so I don't know why I made those so hard but the only way I can get those is if I roll the no same number three times and I only do seven rolls a month so it shouldn't be that hard to avoid but knowing my luck I'll probably get like double my TBR on like a month that I have like a dance recital or something because that's my life but it is officially one in the morning and I am poofed <sighs> so I am going to bed but I finished it and I'm really proud of it so I'm excited to uh, film that on Sunday. I'm going to pick a bonus three TBR prompts for the month, um, which is going to be hard because I already had 14 books picked out, so that would bring me to 17 for the month of May. However, most of my books this month are middle grade, and I've already read three, almost finished with four, so it shouldn't be too hard. And when I get to Believeathon, most of them are audio booked, so I don't think I'll have a hard time doing three more, but I want to test this out, see how it goes, and I thought it'd be fun to do like a little bonus TBR, so I think we're gonna do that. Um, but yeah, it kind of just struck me at the store today that this is something that I wanted to do. I didn't feel like reading tonight because I was so tired and my eyes were so tired that I wanted more of a crafty thing to do, so this is what I'm doing. Um, I did pick the TV show that I'm going to watch. Oh, there's all my TBR raffles. I took some of the prompts and put them on the burgundy cards, but that's why that's all on my bed. Um, but I did pick the TV show that I'm watching for my reading rivalry. We had to watch an anniversary TV show from the list that they gave us, which was like six different shows. So you could pick Pretty Little Liars, Doctor Who, The Office, The Walking Dead, Golden Girls, or Supernatural. And I'm on Team Walking Dead, so I picked Walking Dead because I've seen Walking Dead before, but you're supposed to binge a series. So I decided to binge the first season of Walking Dead because I like it. So I'm watching that right now. Probably not a great, like, go to sleep show, but I am really tired, so I think I'm going to hit the hay as soon as this is done. There's about, like, 20 minutes left of it, so I just want to show you guys what I came up with, and you guys can see more of that on Sunday in Sunday's video, so you should check that out. Okay, so it's about 10 o'clock at night, and I'm super tired tonight. I don't know why. I took a pretty decent nap today, too. I'm just really, really worn out, I think. I'm just burnt. Um, I did start listening to another audiobook. I'm listening to Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins. This is the second on the Hunger Games trilogy, um, or series now, I guess, because they just came out with a prequel, so I guess that's more than a trilogy now. Um, but this is Katniss Everdeen um, after her stent in the Hunger Games, which was a reality show put on for the Capitol um, during a dystopian future where children fought to the death. She is thrown back into the arena for a new challenge. Um, so that's what that's about. I'm sure you guys already know what this whole series is about, just in case you didn't, tried not to give too many spoilers there. Um, I am going to read a little bit more of The Messenger tonight. I am just so tired that I think I'm just going to read um, maybe do like an hour sprint and then crash because I'm so worn. I don't know why. 
Um, but yeah, so that's going to be the rest of my day. I did film my first Booker D video for Sunday, so that's exciting, so you guys can check that out then. Um, and I was going to post... I have one video that I've been wanting to post for a few Wednesdays now, but it just takes a lot of editing and I just don't think I have the energy to do that tonight. So I think I'm going to edit it over the weekend and use it for next Wednesday, but I think for tomorrow um, I will be posting my um, Universal Yum box that I unboxed with my niece. So I think that'll be one that I do because I'm just so, so tired right now. So, but yeah, I think that's going to close out today. I didn't really feel much, but... Yay! <laughs>
it got a lot better. Um, so if you guys don't know what this one is about, I'm going to try to be as spoiler free as possible, but it is about Maddie, who is best friends with Kira in Gathering Blue and his new life living with the blind man. And um, he is in hopes getting his new name, um, which is like his true name that is given out by the leader. And the leader um, is struggling with his own stuff at this current moment because there is poor trading going on in the community where people are getting rid of their true selves and trading it for um, shallow things and they want to close the border and get rid of new people coming into the border so um, ultimately Maddie has to leave to send out messages to different areas telling people that there's a possibility that the border is going to be closing and he also has to go retrieve somebody for, for the seer because the seer may never see that person again if he does not get to them in time um, and then as this is all happening the forest um, which guards their area is turning dark and um, possibly going to kill anybody who goes through the forest in the process. So it is a dangerous mission that he must accept. Um, so this was pretty good. I don't think it was as good as The Giver. I think it was um, kind of mediocre. It was definitely better than Gathering Blue. I did not like Gathering Blue. Which is probably why I didn't remember the characters were from it. But it wasn't as good as The Giver. I think one of the issues that I had with it is that um, with The Giver, it's very, like, realistic fantasy. So, you know, it's definitely more heavily sci-fi and there are a few fantasy elements. But it's not so fantastical that it couldn't happen. Um, with this one, it was definitely more on that fantasy route than a sci-fi route. And I wasn't really digging it. I liked the aspects of the giver that made it seem like this could really happen where this book made it seem like okay that could never happen um but I will go over my call pile with you guys really quick um but characters I gave an eight um I thought the characters were pretty good once I realized who they were it did take me a long time and I feel like if you've read these books far enough apart like I did it does take a long time to realize who these people are so takes a few minutes but you know you 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 get there eventually you do. Um, but atmosphere I gave an eight. I thought that the village was cool and the forest was cool, um, but definitely not as cool as the atmosphere in Giver. Giver's atmosphere was really cool. Um, writing and plot I gave a six for all the reasons that I already said. It definitely leaned more towards fantastical than sci-fi, which is the elements of the Giver that I liked. Um, and with this one, I feel like there wasn't really a plot until the last like 50 pages and it's only 168 pages so I needed the plot to develop a little faster and while I loved getting to know this character and really connect to this character and it made it a very emotional journey to go on with the character, I felt like there was so much character development that when things happened to the character. I was just like, okay, about time. Like, I wasn't, like, sympathizing with the character. I was just like, yeah, it's about time something happened. Um, which is probably not the emotion that you wanted to go for with this one. Um, for Intrigue, I gave it a 7. For Logic, I gave it a 3. Okay. Sorry if my angle changed. My camera got cut off. So, anyway, I was saying the Logic, the things that I had issues with with the Logic was that because it started as a sci-fi-ish series and now it's leaning more towards fantasy, it doesn't feel as realistic as logical as it did in the beginning so now it just kind of seems like all these crazy things from a left field are happening and it's not really making much sense so I'm hoping the fourth book kind of sums it all up I know other people have had trouble with the series for the same reason is that they get so in love with the giver and the giver's atmosphere and then every book takes place in kind of a different area. It doesn't take place in the same atmosphere that the giver did. Um, so the logic kind of drifts in and out of those books. Like with Gathering Blue, um, it led more to these special gifts that people had and these abilities that people had, which were not really things. I mean, it was a thing because the giver obviously could see beyond, um, but most of the people in the giver didn't have these special powers, which made the giver so remarkable. Um, same with Gathering Blue. And now we're getting into a book where people have powers left and right, and it just the logic just isn't there. 
Um, so for enjoyment, I did give it a six because once the plot started, I got really into it and didn't want to put it down. But the first little bit was just really hard to get into. So again, this is another four star book. So that's four out of four books this month so far that have been four star and I'm really happy about that. However, um, this was a very low four star. But yeah, I am going to wrap up this vlog here. It is three minutes to midnight so perfect timing to wrap this up. Four books so far this month in one week. I'm pretty happy about that but I need to start really hunkering down because now with that bonus TBR that you guys are going to see on Sunday, I have... <laughs> I think 17 reads this month and not all of them are only 168 pages and this one took me an entire week to get through the 168 pages so that's not good um but yeah I'm hoping to finish up another book tomorrow finish up a bunch of books this weekend and Believeathon starts Monday so I'm really excited for that but I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching bye wasn't that a great video? Clearly books make me very happy. Now you can make me happy too. Click the subscribe button to follow my channel. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you think I did good. And the notification bell will let you know when I post new content. Also, follow my Instagram for more book shenanigans.